What is up designers? Interactions are a great way to spruce up your designs. You know, add a little bit of that pizzazz. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create three of my favorite ones. Oh, and guess what? Not a single line of code was needed in any of these. Let's get started. All right, so the first off, this is going to be the first one that we're going to animate. So as you can see here, I have a very simple layout. Um, this is your typical, you know, team page where, you know, these are the team members, you know, maybe, maybe on a company website or something like that. And what I want to do is I actually want to have a little bit of animation, um, just so that, you know, uh, we prompt the user to hover over it and, you know, we add a little bit of visual interest. Now, before we jump into the animation, I think it's worth looking at how the HTML is set up. So we have this um, div here that is using a grid layout. And inside that, we have three portraits. Um, the portrait is basically a div that contains an image. That image is set 100% of the width and height. And I'm positioning it absolutely. Um, and then using Z index to just make sure that it sits behind everything. And then um, on top of that, uh, we have this div here that's containing um, a header that is, uh, you know, the the teammate's name. Um, it's stuck to the bottom of the container because on the portrait, I actually have uh, flex um, vertically aligned and then it's justified to the bottom. So you can see that down here. Okay. So, you know, that does it for the HTML. Now let's jump into the good stuff and let's animate this. So the way that I'm thinking about it, the way that I like to approach um, animating uh, Webflow interactions is to always start at the end. So the way that you see these elements here right now are actually what I want them to look like when the mouse is hovering over them, okay? So that, that means these are all the end state. Uh, so what I want to happen is when the user first arrives on the website, they're all going to be grayscale and this name is going to be off. Uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, not in the frame, not in the div. Um, and then when the user hovers over it, I want this to kind of slide up and then, uh, you know, for the image to become like full color. Um, and that's basically the plan for the interaction. So let's, let's go ahead and build that out. Okay. So let's go into our interactions and I want to set the interaction on the portrait itself. So make sure that you click on portrait or the element that you want, uh, the interaction to be on. And we're going to add a mouse hover event. Okay. So in the mouse hover event, we have two, uh, actions. We have the on hover and then on hover out. So we're going to go ahead and create an animation and we're going to call this hover on. Okay. So we're going to do all of our animation in here. Okay. So let's, 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 let's do the first thing. So the first thing we want to do is this portrait name. We want it to start out outside of the div. Okay. So let's say we add that and we add move. Okay. At the very beginning. And then we're going to set, we're going to set this off of the page. So let's say, I think that's, that's enough. And then we're going to set this as the initial state. Okay. So that means when you arrive on the website, when you arrive on this element, it's going to start out this way. Okay. And then let's set the end state. So the end state, I want it to go back to being zero. Okay. And then we're just going to select, you know, an animation curve. I like using out exponential, but you know, through experimentation, uh, through playing around with them, you'll figure out the one that you like to use. Okay. So let's just quickly test that. Boom. There we go. And nothing happens when you hover over cause we haven't uh, done that yet, but that's okay. We'll, we're going to do that in good time. So the next thing I want to happen is for the name, uh, to, sort of start off with opacity zero and then slide in at the same time. Okay. And with this, actually, we're going to add a little bit of delay. So that's another thing that I like to do with my interactions is sort of stagger them a little bit because it adds a little bit of interest. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. 
So starting out at the beginning, we want to move it uh, along the X axis and we're going to move it, uh, let's say uh, here, I, I guess that's, that's enough. Let's, let's just round it out uh, 160. And then we also want it to start out with opacity zero. Okay. And then now what we want to do, so we want to come here and we want to say move along the X axis back to zero. And we also want to change this out expo, same thing. And then also the opacity, we want to set it to a hundred and same thing out expo. Let's, let's test that. Okay. Right now it's happening at the same time. So let's add the, uh, the delay. Okay. So we want to do these two and we want to delay it by 0.2 seconds. Okay. Just a very slight delay. There we go. It's already looking nice. So now let's, the next thing we want to animate, let's go back to the hover on animation. Next thing we want to do is actually, uh, the image. So we want the image to start out, uh, with a filter and we are going to use grayscale. There we go. Grayscale. And we want it to start out at a hundred. And then when you hover over it, we want same thing. You know, it's quite a repetitive process, but you know, once you get the hang of it, so we want to make this down to zero. Okay. Same thing out exponential. And then we, I also kind of want it to zoom in a little bit just so like it feels like we're focusing on this, on this, uh, teammate. So let's say scale. And at the beginning, we want to keep it at one. And then after you hover over, we want to make it 1.1. There we go. And we're going to set this as out exponential and yeah, everything is fine. So let's, let's test this out. So when I preview, boom, there we go. So now, um, because we've already set up the hover on state, it's going to be very easy for us to create the hover out because what we want to do is come here, um, and then duplicate this. Okay. And then when we duplicate it, we want to go in, change the name. This is going to be called hover off. Oops. Hover off. And we want to delete all of these. And these guys are not initial state. And we want to change all of their duration to 0.2. Uh, so here's a little tip for you. Um, when you are animating things back to the original state, I've found that it's always better to make it a little bit snappier to make it happen a bit faster. Uh, because then your website or your animations will feel more, I guess, interactive. Uh, so I found whenever you're doing like a hover off or sending something back to the original state, um, make it happen a little bit faster. Um, and then just use something simple like ease in out. Um, and that will make your interface feel like snappy. All right, let's test this. Okay. Oh no, what's happening? I made a mistake. Oh, okay. We have to, we have to actually select the hover off. There we go. It's looking good. So now we want to uh, do the same thing across to the other, um, to the other ones. So you want to come here and you want to change this, these, uh, the trigger settings. And this allows you to, you know, enable a lot of different settings, but we're going to just come here into class. And because I've given all of them a class of portrait, we're going to switch this and we're going to say, we want this animation to happen on anything with the class of portrait. So let's uh, go ahead and test this and boom, we have a very much more interesting um, interaction here. All right. Now we are going to go to the second example. So the second example, I'm sort of building off of what we just did. 
Um, and you'll see where we're going to go from there. But just in terms of the setup, let's look at the HTML. It's very, very similar, um, in terms of like the way that I animated it. So you can already see I have like a basic sort of hover interaction here. Um, in terms of HTML, um, it's basically just a card wrapper. Inside that, I have three elements. Uh, the image, the description, um, and then underneath it, I have positioned absolutely and then kind of like adjusted to look like it's uh, containing the image. So I have that here set up here. That's the card shape. And that is what I'm kind of scaling up, um, you know, in the interaction. Okay. Now, I think, so my second example is really about 3D um sort of perspective. I really wish more websites would use this because I really like websites that have depth, you know, that look like almost physical. Um, so I'm going to show you how to implement that here. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, that you need to do when you're making something sort of 3D and have a uh, perspective is to enable a uh, 3D perspective on the actual object. So if we come here to our card wrapper and we scroll down here to 2D and 3D transforms, if you press this, you can see here we have self perspective and children's perspective. So all you have to do is make sure that you set a value here. The higher this value is, the more exaggerated your 3D effect is going to be. Uh, so I usually just use a figure of um, uh, 1,200 pixels, and that will be just fine for this example. So then next, once you've done that, what you can actually do is you go and create a, a an element trigger called mouse over element. Okay. And let's just create a interaction. Oh, you can see I already have this created. Let me just delete this and do it from scratch. Uh, just so you see how I do it. So if we come here and we're going to name this 3D um hover okay <laughs> 3d hover and what we're going to do is we can actually rotate the actual card wrapper in in um you know different angles okay so we're going to do rotate and along the x axis so that's this way we're going to just rotate uh the card um you know in a subtle way so I like to do, so the Y axis, let's do 20 degrees one way and then the other way, uh, negative 20. Okay. Let's, uh, do a live preview. Okay. That looks like it's working. And then let's do the Y axis as well. Let's do rotate and we're going to do this along the X axis. So let's say 20 and then at 100%, let's say negative 20. Okay. Uh, and let's test this. Okay. I think I need to reverse it. It's not happening in the right way. Uh, and that's very simple. You just go here and say negative 20. And then here you say 20. Okay. Let's test that again. All right. There we go. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Now, that's all well and good, but you know, we want to exaggerate that effect a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually lift off um, the image off of the card in the background, just so that we have a little bit of perspective, almost like a parallax shift happening. Okay. So if I go into the, to the card image, so I have that selected right now. Let me save out of this. And let me go to our mouse hover. So on hover, um, so I want it to begin with, you know, uh, along the Z axis, I want it to start at zero, but then when I hover over it, Ooh, I'm selecting the wrong thing. Let me change the target and let's make sure that I'm targeting the card image. Okay. So the card image, then when I hover over it, I want to bring it forward, let's say 62 pixels. Okay. Oh, again, I'm selecting the wrong thing. Change target and I want to select uh, card image. There we go. 
Um, and I want this to happen the same way that I always do out exponential. Um, and there we go. Every other setting is okay. Let's make sure that we do that on the hover off as well. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say move. Oh, this is, this is the problem that I always have is, uh, making sure I'm selecting the right target. Okay. So make sure you select card image and then we're just going to set this back to, uh, zero. Okay. And same thing. We're going to make this two and we're going to make this ease in out. All right. Let's, let's give it a shot. There we go. Look how interesting that is. Now, uh, just looking over it, I'm, I think I actually, yeah, no, this is okay. I kind of want to reverse, um, the way that it's happening. So you see when my mouse goes to this corner, it looks like it's coming closer. I actually want it to look like it's pushing back on the image. So I'm going to go back into my 3d hover and I'm going to reverse, reverse it. Okay. So that means here I want this to be negative. And then I want this to be positive. And then same thing here. I want this to be positive. And then I want this to be negative. So let's, let's give that a shot and see what it looks like. There we go. That's more like it. Kind of want it to look like it's facing the mouse, like following the mouse. Now, now this, I mean, we can stop here. This already looks really interesting. Okay. However, I think we can push this a little bit further. So you might have noticed uh, in my actual HTML layout, the image itself um, is larger than its container. Okay. So the reason I did this is I want the div itself to look like a window. Uh, I want the food to look like it is, you know, inside of the element. And when you hover over it, it it's more like a, like a window that you are looking at the food underneath. So the way that we're going to make that effect work is while we're hovering over the element, we're just going to subtly move the image in the background and it'll give it the illusion that um, it's a cutout that's looking at an image underneath. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back to our interaction. We're going to go back to our mouse over element. Let's go into the animation and let's go and select that image. There it is, the actual image, and we're going to move it. So this time around, we're going to let's let's just set everything here. Let's say move, 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 move. OK, and let's go back to the zero percent. And in the zero percent, I want to move it 16 pixels across the X axis. Okay. 16 pixels. And then down here, I want to move it negative 16 pixels. Okay. And then it's the same thing for the X axis. Um, so let's go, uh, 16 pixels and then negative 16 pixels. That's across the Y. Yeah. Negative 16. Let's make sure that's all correct. Yeah, 16, negative, and then x axis 16, and then negative 16. So let's give this a shot. All right, look at that. So you see how the bounds are kind of like not, they're kind of like moving. So it looks like it's a window. All right, so that's about it. Let's uh, copy over everything. So let's save this. And let's exit out of this. Um, and let's set this to class and card wrapper. So now every, every element that has that same class is going to do that same interaction. So bam, bam, bam. <laughs> All right. Let's jump to our third and last example. All right. So I have this like cute little Charmander here. And again, just like the previous example, I've used all of the different techniques uh, that w I have explained to sort of create this interaction here. Okay. Now, um, we can definitely make this a lot cooler. All right. So one thing that I uh, love using when I'm creating interactions is Lottie animations, right? So this Charmander here 
it's not your regular image. It's actually a Lottie animation. So, and what I mean by that, it's, it's basically a JSON file that contains a series of images, like an image sequence. And, uh, you can control the playback of this image sequence using, uh, Webflow interactions. Um, just to show you what that looks like, I basically used a tool called Blender, created this animation over here, and then I exported that animation, came into After Effects. So if I grab my After Effects here, you can see I have the image sequence here, and I used a tool called Body Movin to export this as a Lottie animation. And what that looks like is it comes out as a JSON file uh, with just like a lot of code and you can import this into Webflow and use that in your projects um, uh, and control it by code and do whatever you want. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the interaction, uh, Webflow interactions to play and control this Lottie animation to make it look like um, Charmander is actually a real 3D object. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we come here and go to mouse, sorry, mouse move over element, let's go into our 3D interactions. So you can see I have, um, you know, the objects here moving. So we're going to add an animation. We're going to add, um, sorry, we need to select the correct thing. So let's add uh, the normal. Uh, there we go. And then we're going to say Lottie animation. And let's add that here as well, Lottie animation. And let's make sure at 0%, we are at one. And then at 100%, we are at 99. Let's look, let's, let's see what that looks like. How cool is that? All right. Now we can take, we can take this a step further. So. I actually have a second Lottie animation here that is on top of the normal Lottie animation. So what we can do is we can actually uh, enable this. So right now it's on its uh, display none, but let's let's make it to display block. And I have Charmander that's sort of breathing fire, okay? And what we can do is if we come back to our Webflow interactions, we can say when we hover, we actually want to, well, at the beginning, we want, wait, let, let, let me make sure I'm selecting the right thing. At the beginning, we want this to be opacity zero. And let's set it to opacity zero. And then when we hover over it, we want it to go opacity 100%. We've done this many times already, so uh, you should be familiar out exponential and so on and so forth. And then on hover off, we want to set this back to opacity zero. And oh, again, selecting the wrong thing. <laughs> there we go. And then let's make it 0 0.2. All right, and ease in, ease out. Let's save that. Okay. and. Remember, we need to also go into mouse move over element, 3D interaction, and we need to add the same thing, but now for the the fire version, okay? So let's come in here, let's say Lottie, uh, let's say one, okay? And let's come to 100% Lottie, and let's say 99, all right? And this should work, that's everything we need. So if we come here, you see we have little Charmander, and then when we hover over. <laughs> By the way, if you're not making sound effects while you're creating interactions, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> there we go. So we have uh, Charmander, um, and you know, the, the, the effect is so simple, right? I'm just fading in another Lottie animation, and then I'm playing through that Lottie animation using my X axis my mouse X. And then when I hover off, it just goes back to opacity zero and we have regular old Charmander that's just chilling over there. All right. Okay. Now, because I'm a UX designer, 
One thing that I want to improve is when you first load this website, I kind of want to give a little preview, make it not look like an image, maybe like do a tiny little animation. And we can do that very easily with this page load. Okay. So I've already, I prepared this uh, beforehand already. So when the page starts loading, what I want to do is make sure that we center the Lottie animations. And so if we go into this, what it looks like is I want to set it to 50% and I want to set this to 50%. Okay. So that happens when the page loads. And then when the page finishes loading, I want to animate the normal version. So if we go in here, what that basically does is it just kind of like does like a little animation where Charmander kind of like the camera like circles around Charmander a little bit just to hint to the user that, hey, like, you know, you can interact with this thing. So there we go. You can see that happening there. So once you load the website, it kind of just like, you know, hints to you that, you know, you can do something with it. And there we go. Um, so Lottie animations, you can really push um, a lot. And I've been messing around with it a lot. So I created this like extra sort of demo here where I rendered out these like boxes and I wanted to make it look like as you were scrolling, uh, the perspective on the boxes was um, is changing. So you can see here. So as as you're scrolling, it's sort of like, you know, animating um, the boxes. Uh, but there's one shortcoming that I've discovered with Lottie animations is sometimes the file sizes could be a little big. So if you're using Lottie animations, just remember like to make sure you're exporting the right sizes just so that um, your websites can stay speedy and load everything uh, quickly. And there you go. Three fairly simple interactions that you can quickly add to the elements in your websites and make them more interesting. By the way, each one of these projects are actually available to clone. Like always, links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're interested in becoming a Webflow master, we have a Webflow masterclass. So check out the link in the description for details on when the doors are going to be open. I'll catch you on the next one.